Hey, you just tuned in to the world's best fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. Okay, today we have a great giveaway. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how you can win this prize. This is what you got to do, and then I'll show you the prize, okay? Here's what you got to do. In the first 24 hours that we put up this video, put a comment below in the first 24 hours. Now, in this episode, we talk about uh, cockfighting. Don't worry about it. It'll make sense when you listen to the episode. Um, and in there, we talk about funny names for your cock, the you know the rooster that is in the cockfighting. Um, put down the best names for a cock in cockfighting in the comments. We'll pick the best one in the first 24 hours. And if you win, here's what you win. Check this out. You get an entire container of Organifi's Red Juice. This is a great stimulant-free pre-workout. It's how I like to use it. When I go off caffeine, I take this. Got great pumps, still have good energy. It's got rhodiola and cordyceps in it, and it tastes amazing. It's red flavor. Red flavor, that's right. It's Ooh, delicious. Yummy. Uh, also, subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications because we do giveaways, so when we post the video, you'll get alerted so that you can enter in to win cool stuff. One more thing, go to mindpumpfree.com right now. Pause this. Go over there, mindpumpfree.com. Go check out all the free stuff that we have. Download all of it. It's great stuff. I wrote most of it, so I know it's good. Go check all of that out. One last thing before this awesome podcast starts, and this one is awesome. Uh, this month, we have put three programs on massive discount. Okay, Two are individual programs. One is a bundle. The first program is MAPS HIT, so it's high-intensity interval training program with weights. The other program is MAPS SPLIT. This is an advanced bodybuilder split program that we wrote. And then the next one is the bikini bundle. It's a combination of programs to help you get ready for bikini season. They're all 50% off. Here's how you get the discount. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code SPRINGBREAK. And you can get all of them, by the way, if you're really ambitious, get all of them 50% off. By the way, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Okay, enjoy the podcast. Go, go, Coxzilla. Hey, so I want to I want to hear what it was like for you to record your book. I was not, um, I, w I like, when you told me you were doing that, I was like, Man, that has got to be, bro. That's got to be tough, bro. You're, but you're talking to Sal, though. I mean, he's like a talk machine. Well, he, oh, okay, that's he, not the okay, same. Yeah, dude. but here's the thing: he's a talk machine. <laughs> he's a writing machine, right. but reading like that out loud. Yeah, because I know he he's a um, Adding, yeah. Inflection, he's everything. a he does that thing where you what's a, what's it called? Magic. You, he's a you no, know, it's oh. not magic. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> I see he's doing this. A, yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a speed reader where yeah. he like uh, he looks at just the whole paragraph and then he moves on to the next paragraph. Yeah, he doesn't yeah, yeah. actually read word for word like when Johnny he Five. Yeah. 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 No, it's not that. But no, you know what it is? It's okay. So I let's was wondering be, what this was going to be like. Let's all be straight up. Okay. Let's all be honest now. Uh, straight you up. Guys, you guys know my ADD. It's a legit issue. Like, I, it's very hard. Yeah, I was like, a little concerned for you. Like, let's, like, when we have meetings, you guys make jokes about me all the time. Uh, but, you know, when we have meetings, I'm like, it's very, very hard for yeah. me to, I have to like stand, walk around. Very, very hard. So, all right. So here's what happened. A little background, right? So um, the book that I wrote is almost ready. It's almost ready to be sold. And the 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 last some of the last stuff that we need to do besides finishing the editing and all that stuff is I read the book and do the audio portion. And authors usually hire somebody to read the book cuz just cuz you can write doesn't mean you can right. speak and they hire read. actors for that. They do. And there's professionals that do it. But uh, you know, I'm a podcaster. It would be stupid for someone to buy my book and then not hear my voice. I'm known for my voice or, you know, for the few people I do. Should have gone with the my... British guy. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, everybody, imagine? everybody loves a British accent. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. this is... Yeah. So I'm like, I got to read it, right? But this requires me or required me to sit down. Actually, you sat in your chair, Justin. So if you're wondering why your seat is uh, is yeah. a little... You know, it smells like olive oil. Or why your mic smells like ass. That's what you <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. A little bit of ass. Anyway, yeah. so uh, I sat there. What does that mean? And the <laughs> so, it smells like my mom. Uh, sorry, mom. Why? Uh, no, I. So I had to sit in your chair and hold an iPad, and I read the book from nine a.m. to three p.m. <laughs> straight from. Have you ever Have you ever read a book in two and a half days That's before? Crazy. I. I mean, I, yeah. When I'm really into it, but this is so different to to read a book and and read it out loud oh. into the mic or talk and do it right and. You gotta, you know, you, you're not, you're not. I just, don't think I've ever read a book in two days. Oh, maybe I was in here. I'd maybe be four or with five you. days, but two days—that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So, and I'm, but it's straight, right? I'm reading straight. I have to, I have to, you know. When you're reading, you're remember the person's listening to you, so it's not like I'm just going, 
you know, blah, 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 blah. It's boring. I got to read it and talk and, and, and emphasize. and like Voices? Yeah, not voices. <laughs> <laughs> like characters? Like when yeah. I read to my son? I remember when I trained Did my- you have moments of Tourette's, like little like swear words? Yeah, I'm like, fuck, no. Fuck! <laughs> I, I remember when I trained my client, Sharon, and Sharon asked me, hey, Sal, what? No, I didn't do that, right? I didn't how change many my voice. So how many, did he, how many times, because they, okay, I know Doug was in here in studio. There's then somebody you, from the publishing company, Hachette, that's right. the company we're working with, and he's listening in, and then you'll stop me. If I pronounce a word wrong, which I tend to do. Thank God I wasn't reading it. Oh, right. man. <laughs> <laughs> Back up. Back we up. to rewind this tape <laughs> yeah. a thousand more times, please. <laughs> my my <laughs> uncle asked me why I didn't write a book. I said, that's why I didn't write a book no, right exactly. there. <laughs> He's you like, just got to write your own like Webster's Dictionary. <laughs> yeah. you know, like yeah, yeah, Adam's version. Like a key that comes with yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so he, and he'll stop me. Oh, you said that a little fast, or you slurred your word there, or whatever. Or I'll do it myself. I'll read a sentence and I'll just go back and read it over. So it was nine a.m. to three p.m. and um, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never done anything like that before, and I was actually nervous because again, I have, it's so hard to focus like that. I thought I was going to go crazy, and I was exhausted, dude. At the end of the day, mm. I was so tired. I went. Did you home. not talk when you got home? No, well, I was my kid. It was just me and the older kids. Remember, uh, Jessica was visiting her mom. Yeah. So, but normally when I come home, I'm like going on walks with the kids, going to the park, taking them on workouts. I came home and I'm like, you guys want to watch TV? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like zone out. Yeah, no, yeah, we're gonna relax. But uh, no, it it was it was great, dude. I actually, uh, I mean, I don't want to say I enjoyed it, but uh, it was cool. The guy that was listening in um, was super cool. He loved everything I was saying, which was cool. It was very encouraging. Mm. Um, so that was, it was, it was, a, it was a cool experience. How, how often did he have to get you to say something over again? Did you, did you mess up? Yeah, I don't know. Doug, you, how, how often? Would you say he had to stop me often or, I mean, I stopped myself way more than he did. Yeah, he did occasionally, mainly for pronunciation, I would mm -hmm. say, or mm -hmm. like you said earlier, maybe slurring something together, jumbling some words. Yeah, because I was drunk. So, uh, <laughs> drunk uh, with power. You know what I said wrong? <laughs> what? Uh, See, now I don't know how to say it. Adenosine triphosphate, ATP, right? He said, how do I say it, Doug? Or did I just say it right? I don't know. I oh, have so to, you had to look it up. I didn't adenosine. Adenosine, I think, is the right way to say it. Yeah. So you had a guy on there that knew how to say things like that? That's what he does. That's, that's what he does. He's like an expert at uh, pronunciation in English. I didn't even think about that, that they would have to find somebody who ha that's versed in like, you know, because that's, oh, yeah. you so could, you you could like an idiot. right, you could pronounce a lot of things really, really well. And then you get into like, you know supplements and the and the and the yeah. words and the chemicals and the and things. that's like my field, so I didn't even think I right, said that, it wrong. Right, and, and he stopped. He goes, "Is that? I don't know. If, are you sure that's how you say it?" And I'm like, "I don't know." And we looked it up, and you know, Google lets you hear the word how it's supposed to be said. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, that's wrong." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. wow, interesting. Yeah, so it was cool. The guy was super awesome. As soon as we, because he, he, he's on Zoom, right? So Doug had a computer set up. I can see him. And he's muted unless he he interjects or whatever. Did he expect you to be more buff since you wrote a book about lifting weights? Yeah, he's like, you got. He's like, uh, where's the guy that wrote this book? <laughs> it's like, it looks like you try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Have, you, have you read your own book? He says. Yeah. <laughs> now are you gonna work out when the book comes out so people think? No, I, 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 he, he's in his house or whatever, and in the background he had a big picture of uh, Frederick Douglass, who's one of my heroes. So oh. right away, mm. I'm like, I like you. Uh, I told him that. I'm like, is that Frederick Douglass in the back? He's like, absolutely. And then we became friends after that. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was, yeah. it was cool. It was fun. I'm really excited. I'm really excited for this book to come out. It's definitely, um, if, you're in fit if you're into fitness and you're a fanatic, this book is going to help you communicate, uh, the, help you communicate fitness the right way. And it's the perfect thing to give someone that you've been yeah. trying to talk into doing things the right it's way. selling it to like your friends and family. But like, it, that's the hardest part. Effectively. And it's, right. of course, it's about resistance training. And, uh, and so that's the, the whole purpose of it. Anyway, a lot of fun. It was, it was really, really hard. I was super nervous. But we finished a day early. Yeah, I, was, I remember. I know, I was surprised. I did not that. think that was going to happen. Yep. I remember I was asking you before you started, I said, what happens if you don't finish in time? Do they know. just extend it? Uh-huh. But you got it knocked out. And that's with stopping too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's really impressive. I know, I'm pretty amazing. I'm pretty awesome. No. I'm pretty awesome, guys. <laughs> no, no, no. That was, I don't know if I want to do it oh, again. I love it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. Hey, did you guys... This has got to... Things are getting silly nowadays. Uh, did you guys hear about the Mr. Potato Head stuff? Yes, stuff? I saw Connor talking no, about what, it. What are you... Okay, they so, got rid of Mr. <laughs> they wanted to make it... Sorry, that was a weird laugh. They wanted to make it gender neutral. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? It's a potato. Yeah. Okay. I had well, a Mr. There was a Miss Potato Head. Like, first of all, like, yeah, they were her too. First of all, he identifies that's a good, that's as a, a good, Mr. Good, that's a good point. Yeah. There was a there was a Mrs. Potato Head. Yeah. They, they wanted to make it gender neutral, but he identifies as a Mr. Forever since it's day a one. Potato. Yeah, and it's a potato. It's a fictional character. What the fuck? Anyway, they reversed yeah. it. They're they're going to keep it Mr. Potato Head. Oh, they are, did. Yeah. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. So that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a good thing. Stupid. What were they going to call it? Just Stood up for potato that. head? <laughs> that's <laughs> what it was. So that, that's what they were going to do. And I then thought, what was Mrs. Potato So I thought I already went. I didn't know that they, they reversed it, huh? No, they reversed it. They were, so they were just talking about it. They announced it. Now, okay, they everybody got pissed off. Okay, they announced it, or was it one of these things that we? No, they did. We gotta be careful of where, like, some internet troll brought it Dude, up. I and feel it was like all troll. these things are trolls, and then it just becomes That's how like I feel repeated. Too. Because there's another thing with like, is it true? Like, Coke was, you know, hammering their employees for being too white. Yeah, not, no, that you yeah. saw that. I saw yeah, that. That video. has to be fake. right? No, that's not a real video. No, it is. No, it is not. That's called critical race theory. That is not the one that the video of the of this the freaking um, uh, bears, and then he gives them a. a uh, oh, no, no, no. That's not, not that. That's what I thought you were <laughs> The talking. polar bears? Yeah, the, <laughs> no. polar, the polar bears give him a Coke and he says, be less white. No, no, no. Yeah, that that's... was a joke on what actually happened. Yeah, oh, sweet. okay. So what what really happened? So critical race theory is this. Yeah, no, I understand okay. that. But what does that have to do with Coke? It was a training course that they did for their employees. And it was talking about essentially uh, how to be less white because being mm. white apparently is racist according to critical race theory and it was i mean very racist the way it came across yeah and so people were kind of up in arms about it and uh, i did not know this yeah it was a real thing how to be less white i was like what <laughs> wow what do you do i yeah. okay so i've what seen do you? Don't i've seen eat some don't artists eat i've seen mm. some artists making songs so that must be why so this just happened then you're right, right yeah. but stop it you yeah. know what i mean just just stop all this stop with, stop with all this stuff <laughs> step got, one here yeah. get a tan yeah yeah step two don't eat mayonnaise Ooh, sorry hey <laughs> just walk right into that one you know <laughs> i'll just see my way out did I you guys guys read the uh, men's health article that came out about Orange Theory? Oh, yeah. You showed uh, us that. boy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was trying to, I was going to ask Doug. I meant to ask him, what episode was it when we first talked about Orange Theory and the Epoch Theory? Hmm. Do you remember when that was? I'm sorry, <clears throat> but my memory isn't that sharp. How far? Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously not the we're exact all, we're all screwed. one. But he it was- is, It's been a long time he ago. He is old, I mean. It's- <laughs> It was. It, I was. It in, I think it was in the hundreds. It was early. It was way early. Yeah, it was really early. So, for people who don't know, because we have a lot of listeners that came in way after that, right? You worked with the first ones in the Bay Area. You were right. an integral part of them, so you know the ins and outs right. of Orange Theory, like you know very well. Yeah, right. And the first thing, and I'll never forget the first meeting, like training meeting that I had. And they, in fact, in, in the men's uh, health article, they talk about this how. They came out with, you know, really pushing the epoch and the afterburn theory mm-hmm. and that you burned all these extra calories throughout the day because you pushed really hard in your workout. And we knew about this. This was this got really popular, I want to say, in like the early 2000s. Yeah, because there was a study that came out that showed that. So epoch represents the ca- the afterburn, right? Yeah, so excess post-oxygen consumption. Yeah, so you burn a bunch of calories in your workout, but based on how you work out, your body then will burn additional calories than it normally would for hours after the workout. Not just hours, 24 hours. Right, yeah, and, so, and they're saying, that, oh, this is a big deal. Epoch is why Orange Theory is so effective. It makes you burn all these extra calories, that kind of stuff. Yes, mm-hmm. and so we, and again, we were, I remember when this study went around back in, I believe it was the early 2000s when it got really popular. And, um, you know, we were all jumping on the bandwagon. We were all doing hit and pushing circuit training, mm-hmm. and that was a big deal. And then later on, uh, research came out to basically poo-poo the idea that it really is, it's its splitting hairs, the difference. Yeah, you're just chasing the burn. Yeah, and most of your ben- benefits of doing cardiovascular training happen while you're doing it, and the afterburn effect is minimal to nothing. At most. At most. Right. And I thought it was really interesting that this brand that was exploding out of, you know, out of Florida, made its way over here, and, and is in this the late 2000s was attaching themselves to this kind of old science. Mm. And I remember being in the training and talking to all the trainers and my buddy who owned the facility and, you know, they're touting Epoch and telling everybody the afterburn effect. And, and I'm going, you know, you guys know. Well, you got to find something to to go with their tech. It's totally. A, it's no, a, totally. You got to find something it's to a, base it off of. It's a great Whoa, sales Whoa, look tool. at it. 273. Yeah, so uh, in 2016, we talked about it. Yeah, Epoch. We have 1,500 now? The way, yeah, yeah we're way, way back. The, the, Men's uh, health is slow, obviously. Yeah, I know. Behind. E- <laughs> Epoch is, uh, for marketing purposes, it's brilliant, right? Because you, you, what you do is you, you start this brand. The, when the method, you know, Orange Theory classes are hit circuit based. That's what they are. So, what a great way to sell your workouts to differentiate them from other workouts. Yeah. Other classes burn calories, but our ca- our classes burn extra calories after the workout, and mm-hmm. it's epoch. And going in the orange zone or whatever uh, is what does it. So, it's very very smart marketing, but it doesn't. St- the science doesn't stack up at all. It's, and like you said, it's it's. 
it's it's more than splitting hairs. Well, and then then the the problem is that and that that really I think bothered me and you guys too when we talked about you know circuit training is the opposite of what most these people need. Mm -hmm. So that was the real problem that I had with it. So aside from this being bad old science and attaching your entire brand around that, that's already bad as it is. And then that modality of training, just from my experience of all the clients that mm -hmm. I've trained, I would never train them that way. Mm -hmm. It's just not ideal. Most of them need to build, rebuild their metabolism. Most of them are, were un these are the type of people, the type of people that are drawn to this class mm -hmm. are the cardio bunnies, are the people that love to do the circuit training, love to do this on and off the wagon with their diets, and it is not helping the cause whatsoever. No, and okay, here, this is the big conversation that it's not happening yet, but it will happen. Hopefully, we're the ones pushing it, but even if we're not, it's going to happen. You can view exercise, your workouts, two different ways, right? One way is the calories being burned while I'm working out. Yeah. The other way is Manually. what are the adaptations that this workout is causing, and then what are the side effects of those adaptations, good or bad? So if your goal is to burn more calories, I can either burn them manually or I can train adaptations that will make my, my body burn more calories on its own. Now, obviously, one of them is way better of an approach, especially long-term. The other one is super short-term, requires a lot of time, a lot of effort, and is not very effective. A hard one-hour workout. By the way, your cardio machines are lying to you. So if you go on cardio machine yeah. and you do an hour, it's like, you burn 900 calories. Total bullshit. Oh, uh, yeah. You're, lucky, you're way, yeah. lucky if you burn an extra 500 calories in an hour workout if you're really going hard, yeah, right? pretty Five, intense. Right. 500 calories, you're lucky. That's a lot of work, a lot of sweat, a lot of work. Now, could you speed your metabolism up? through training the proper adaptations, AKA building muscle, getting stronger. Could you get your metabolism to burn 500 extra calories on its own? Totally realistic. In fact, I've done that with almost every client that I've ever trained. In fact, uh, so you know, you guys have heard me bring up the Hadza tribe before, right? right. Which mm -hmm. is this, okay, so uh, again, real quick, it's a modern hunter-gatherer tribe. Scientists went down, and these are hunter-gatherers. They're moving all the time. They're In comparison to the average modern society, Westerner, they're moving way more, right? They're hunting, they're gathering, they're not watching TV, they're not on the internet, whatever. And they found, they, through some very sophisticated testing, that they didn't burn that many more calories than the average they Westerner. They just became more efficient with Their it. bodies adapted yeah. and learned to do that, right? So here's another one that just came out. This, just was, this was just posted in the New York Times. And what they did is they studied uh, the Amazon, and they studied children who are in rural areas who run, play, and forage for hours versus kids that lived in the more modern societies where they sit down, they're on the internet, watch TV or whatever. And they said, okay, the kids who are out in the rural areas, in the jungle, they're leaner. They're much leaner and more fit than the kids in the modern societies. It's got to be because they're constantly moving, constantly doing all this activity. But what they found was, with, again, through sophisticated testing, here's the trippy part. They do not burn more calories day to day. Mm -hmm. The difference was they just eat way less calories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They eat a lot less calories. So trying to burn your way out of obesity through manual exercise, it's such a losing strategy. It just doesn't work. So we have to completely shift our – this is actually part of what the book is about. We have to shift yeah. our focus. Otherwise, you're not going to succeed, obviously. I mean, we've been hammering burning calories manually for decades. It ain't working. Well, you just – I mean, you notice that with clients and with yourself, like how quickly you get adapted to that style of training specifically, It's too. only a couple so, weeks, Yeah, dude. it's only a few weeks. And then you, it's like you start getting really good at it, but then your results just stop happening. And then, you know, people think that they got to press harder and press harder and yeah. press harder. But it's it's – you can only go so far, and then your body starts going the opposite direction that's it's why, right it's why athletes do their first couple weeks of like hell week where they have the hell week and they do all kinds yeah. of cardio then their body we, adapts we to it. peak and then and it's then peak the, training and then the rest of the season they don't disappear i mean they still are running all over yeah. the place or, i mean that or every athlete would just disappear if that if if using cardio as a main source of tool to burn body fat was a great way to do it then all athletes, all runners, would just completely well, melt away. Well, humans, it doesn't happen because the body gets very efficient yeah. at doing it. And that. we wouldn't be here. Okay, here's the truth. It, humans would not exist if that happened, if we didn't adapt and our bodies didn't become more efficient because the hunter-gatherer lifestyle uh, was very active. Now, you tell me, as a hunter-gatherer, you drop someone in the middle of the jungle or in the wilderness, they don't know agriculture, they don't have you know livestock or whatever, they're just hunting and gathering – could they get an average of three to 4,000 calories a day? No. They would, no way. They couldn't. So the body learns to adapt. So the key is how do I get my body to adapt in a favorable way 
in, in you know uh, under the context of modern society. That is to train for strength, which helps speed up the metabolism. That's what you want. It's the best insurance. It requires the least amount of work. And here, but here's a, here's a problem: burning lots of calories. You get results initially, so people get tricked by it, right? It goes like this. It goes yeah. real fast, and then it plateaus, and then you're screwed. And the opposite is true with weight training. With weight training, it's a snowball effect. Yeah. It starts off slow, and then it starts to ramp up, ramp up, and, it, and just this long-term yeah. effect starts to happen. Yeah. So that, that's the message that, that needs – but yeah, I read that article in, in the New York Times. I was like, man, it, you know. By the way, daily activity – Daily cardio still has health health benefits, so I don't want people to be like, "Oh, it's a waste of time." Oh, it's just yeah. not a great way to burn fat, but there's still lots of health benefits from doing it. No, so you no. know, keep it up. I think of the same thing like fasting, right? We talk about the benefits of fasting for the you know relationship with food. It's not a great tool for you to use for fat loss. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, hey, uh, how you guys? How you guys workouts go? These these workouts are fun with you guys. I tell yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. No, it's been going good. Everybody's I, looking good. I had so I I backed off a little bit this last week. I mean, I was with family up in uh, Truckee. So I didn't train for about four days, and I was like really low calorie. I was eating like 500 calories a day, so I wanted to drop. Wow, some. that's hella low. Yeah, I wanted to drop some weight. So uh, I, you know, I told you guys I was pushing like 236 or so, and then I came down to about 230, still not feeling good. I just felt stiff and tight. My hips were bothering me. My low back was starting to bother me. My shoulders, like. I was losing my mobility, and as much as I was enjoying putting size on and getting stronger and stronger, my body just doesn't, you know, my body does not want to be above that. And I've, it doesn't matter how many times I try. And I thought maybe this time around, because I spent so much time on mobility for the last couple of years, that I thought, oh, maybe I'll feel different when I get to that kind of weight again. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to me that I still didn't feel good. Now, I, I have more mobility, uh, like squat depth, than I ever have in my life, and at the size that I am. So still, sure. still positive. Yeah, right. So I'm still I'm super mobile, but I, my body just doesn't like that. Yeah. Doesn't like that weight. It's so I drop down again. I'm I'm down to about two twenty four or so, and I already feel way better. What's your What's your weight? What's your best muscular weight? Like as far as how, just overall feeling. Oh, you mean how I feel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, two fifteen. Yeah, yeah, two fifteen and lean. Like two fifteen and like nine, ten percent. I feel really, really yeah. good. I feel strong at that weight. I still feel like I have got good size to me. I feel mobile. I feel lean, athletic. Like that's a good. That's a pretty good weight for me. Mm -hmm. Although. And you guys know this, like you can be a total different version of yourself at 215, 220, 210. So I've been, you know, five different versions of myself at 215. So the weight is less important mm. than it's like, more. You said 215, 9%. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I thought I was losing weight and then I just looked and I gained three. Uh, <laughs> so I have that going for Who's me. Who's your trainer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fire that guy. Uh, yeah, no, I went to uh, Palm Desert. I got a bunch of sun in it. It was great. There was actually this gym that was open, the only one that's open there, uh, this world gym. Gym, but and I asked the guy, I'm like, well, how was it possible that you guys were able to stay open? And I guess they found a way around all this by um, they were treating some some of their clientele that were coming in for like diabetes, and they had like a physician on staff, and so they kind of went more in the medical route. Uh, and we're able to get this like certain type of a license. So like the whole time, like uh, with the pandemic, and they've been able to stay up. And I was thought that was brilliant. That's very smart. Uh, and, and it was great. Cause it was like, it, it's funny. Cause like world's gym and golds are, you know, a little bit more of the, uh, you know, the meathead kind of clientele that are like really nice, but like super serious, especially worlds. Yes. Yeah. Worlds, a lot of big dudes in there, like super serious. So I, I was like, man, you know, I'm squatting and there's some dudes putting some, some weight up. And so I was like, you know, got inspired inspired and was feeling good and I, I had worked out a couple times and then the, the, the day came where I was doing squats and I was starting to stack some plates and it was like oh like I did core beforehand and my core is fatigued I was not <laughs> bracing properly and I just totally screwed myself so I'm like working through a lot oh, of did pain you really? right now yeah yeah at the most hardcore gym I've ever been into was a world's uh yeah. gold's ego got me dude gold's used to be that way it, uh but then gold's kind of went a little bit more mainstreamish mm -hmm. they were still pretty hardcore but a little more mainstreamish world stayed yeah. like i i mean I, I i went to a world's as a kid i was like 18 and i'm like i'm gonna go to a world i love gym. it dude it's like a blast from the past you know oh, you dude. get all these old dudes in there that are just yeah. like beasts hey, oh yeah i had so i have a supplement question for you because i've been uh lately i've been trying to like cycle both using uh pre-workout on some because i've been using more pre-workout than i have in a long time so i noticed that i was so i was kind of cycling off a little bit and i was using the the red juice from organifi oh, yeah. again and 
I notice I really like it, right? So it does obviously it doesn't give me the same type of energy that I get from a you know caffeine loaded pre workout. That's stimulant free. But so. I get a pump from it. I get a good little energy kick from it, and I get a good workout from it. But I also notice that it has rhodiola in it, mm-hmm. and I know that I've tried other supplements with rhodiola, and I don't like the way I feel. Do you have any idea why it doesn't bother me in the red juice? Do you I, think it's some- I think it's the it's the dose. So rhodiola is by the way very well studied. It's one of the only stimulant uh, free, you know, uh, compounds, right? So it's not a stimulant. It's not a classic stimulant like caffeine, but it does improve exercise performance reliably. It's very, very consistent. It will improve your performance, but it is not a central nervous system stimulant. Now, here's the thing with rhodiola. Uh, the doses can be very individual. So like you, if I take a high dose of rhodiola, I feel bogged down. Yes, I feel tired. If I take a smaller dose of rhodiola, I feel energized. Oh, okay. And so the Organifi Green, the, the red juice has, which I have it right next to me. Isn't that weird? It's like yeah, I just, just had it right there. It right out of your uh, they, it's got, there. it's got, uh, it also has cordyceps in it, um, and it has a, a good appropriate dose. I would say, if you like more rhodiola, you could take a bigger dose. But it's, a, it's a great stimulant-free uh, pre-workout. So you're going to get, you know, exercise. So here's how I recommend people do this when they're weaning themselves off caffeine, which you should. You should wean yourself off caffeine at least once every three months because caffeine loses its effect. It's just not as great. When you wean yourself off, go back on. It's amazing. But in that off period, you'll feel like shit if you don't find something else. Yes. And, uh, you know, rhodiola is a good uh, substitute and the red juice has all okay, that in good. there. Okay, good. So that's, I'm using it that way. Yep. So I just kind of like, when I ever I catch myself, I've talked about this on this podcast, using anything. If I find myself scaling up, scaling up, I allow myself to do that a little yeah. bit. And then when it gets to a point where it's like, okay, I'm having a pre-workout, I'm having one or two coffees or an energy drink in a day. I'm getting too far. Now I'll come back the other direction. And instead of just going cold turkey, I'll come, I'll cut like the consumption of caffeine like in half and then I'll add something like that in there. Yeah, so I, I, that's what I do. I cycle my caffeine. Otherwise, I just I end up getting up to 300 milligrams, 400 well, You're the milligrams. most sensitive of all of us. Very, yeah. very, very, very. You guys can handle quite a bit more uh, than I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Justin, did you see, I, don't, I, I would assume you saw it. Did you see the combat drones that are now uh, getting, did you see no, this? No, I thought you were going to bring up the cockfighting, but yeah, no, let's talk about this. We'll talk about that too. Uh, uh, so it's combat drones, so what? They had, they're they geared up with like guns and everything? Bro, or what? there's a, the first, so it's a, it's a Singapore-based uh, aerospace company, I think it is, that now they have a bunch of orders, right? It's a drone that it's the first supersonic combat drone ever in production. Dude. So it flies supersonic and That's it's scary. unmanned. So, you know, I'm just picturing <sighs> these these aerial battles in the future with drones that are moving so fast you can't see them and just, and just you know, blasting each other. So weird. This def- Dude, def- this my, is going to uh, get weird. My brother uh, crashed and broke That's mine. scary. What? Yes. Those things are hard to crash, though. Oh, because you have to go manual when you're up at... Uh- yeah, well, so the one, the big one that we have for work is hard to crash because it has all the sensors. Mm. But I have the little Mac, the DJI Mac Mini, which is dope, right? I mm. love that thing. And uh, I let him fly it while we were up there. And uh, he, he's, I was showing him, like, yeah, it's really cool. It's stabilized here. And I'm like, here, take it. And just hand it over to him. And he's like, we're both watching the screen while he's flying it. And he's just like, man, this thing's so cool. And I was like, caught Watch up watching this. the screen. <laughs> And I and I go I look up to try and find it. And I I get lost in the sun. I can't really see it. And he's like, and then also you hear this, and it gets he flies it into the tree, bro. Oh, <laughs> into the tree, comes down and just explodes. No, Ex- yeah, you can't save it, dude. Uh, Cannot save it whatsoever. It was painful. But he felt so, bro. He felt so bad. I just let bro. It's a toy. Relax. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So he ordered me a brand new one like right away on the spot. <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, I feel so terrible. They're fun, man. Uh, they are. They're, and the technology is. Crazy on those. Dude, that's like when we were in Tahoe and like Eli had just got the drone and he was going to do this whole aerial footage of like the house and everything. And I'm out there. I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then it's like, it, it just caught a left. He couldn't turn it right anymore. Just near exploded. Yeah, that's yeah. the oh. problem with those things is they're they're not built like really, because they have to be so lightweight, right? Mm-hmm. So they're not built like really sturdy. And I, didn't, I thought maybe it would be like, I was like, oh, maybe I'll just hit the branches on the way down and it'll be salvageable or they'll be like, no, <laughs> it like explodes. Have you seen people who, because you know, like uh, there's uh, it's like wasps' nests can be really hard to take down. Yeah. So there have been people with oh, I've seen this. that will uh, put a fire a flamethrower. This on is drone. this is like my area. Yeah, and like, they'll they'll uh, <laughs> like hire me to do this. Like, oh, get nothing but pure joy. Yeah, they'll they'll, <laughs> uh, they'll flamethrower yeah. freaking <laughs> lighting these fuckers on fire. I love it. It's so oh. awesome. Yeah. Yes. How have you guys not brought? I can't believe this podcast. I don't know what are we twenty minutes deep into this, and you guys have not brought up the UFO flying over the airplane. 
I didn't. Oh shit! I barely read this. What? Yeah, I know. I just I, I read thought this. for sure you dorks would from have a commercial like, airline, right? The, yes, they had uh, reported it, and they have him recording it, and they had multiple other people. Because well, it's happened every day now. You know, I swear. There's like UFO sightings all over the place, man. They're preparing us. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I told you guys. Like, if you if you actually like listened to that whole uh, episode of uh, Bob Lazar, I listened to stuff. a bunch of it with you. Yeah. Remember in the car? Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty interesting. I just liked how. Uh, you know, he was able to kind of break down a lot of the 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 science behind, like you know, the reactor and everything. Uh, just uh, you know, who knows whether or not that's like how everything works? But it was just interesting to hear like a scientist try to explain what was unexplainable. Yeah, it's weird that we're getting all these sightings all of a sudden. It seems now, like I, a cluster. So I'm not, I'm, or I'm, we've had them and then they haven't reported. I'm it, still not know? sold. I just think that we don't we don't know what like the CIA is built. Like I mean. Think how far ahead we were with like the stealth bomber and stuff like that. That, thing, right. that thing was created like 20, 30 years it before was. it was revealed to anybody was. else. So if we had if we had that it was inspired by something. Yeah, but if we had that technology back then, what do you think we have today? Yeah. And we're you just talking about drones that can fly like light speed and lasers no, and no, shit. No. Come on, dude. <laughs> well, it was I mean, trippy. Come on, what is what well, do you think well, they got out there? It was trippy in the, in that like Bob Lazar thing. He was talking about like they had they had uncovered one of these um, UFOs like from an archaeological dig, like it, it so it was it ancient. Been, it's like ancient, yeah. I was like, dude, that that sounds like a Steven Spielberg movie. Yeah, that's their yeah. crappy tech. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you found our, our phase one uh, yeah. UFO. Yeah, yeah exactly. we're at phase five thousand now. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't have to think about it all, yeah. but it's it's it is cool. It's interesting, whatever. But yeah. I like the theory that aliens are just humans from the future, and they're so different, and they came they come back to to study it. That's what yeah. I like. I like that theory. Right oh, there. that's kind of interesting. Yeah. It's a very egotistical one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's no aliens. Just yeah, humans. there's that one, and then there's some kind of like biological robots, right? So like. If, if you're going to travel and traverse like uh, mm-hmm. to different galaxies, like it, you, it, it's probably going to be pretty difficult to do that with like the human form. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's a good, in- that's yeah. an interesting thing. God, you guys have all these really interesting theories. Well, I mean, uh, geez, dude, well, you gotta, we, 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 yeah, we like to talk about it. it. It's kind I'm, of I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a good time. The multiverse and all that. Yeah. You Doug, know, did you it. pull up a picture of the, of the drone? I want, I want the guy, I want the guys to see it. You guys got to see this thing. It looks crazy. It's like a, a it's like a black dart. Wow. And it's totally smooth and they're going to arm this thing. So here's the here's the question I have. Is this like something out of a Marvel movie? Well, okay, so here's the question, okay? Uh war has always included humans and there's always been the cost of right. which has been human life. We go to war, people die, right? What's it going to be like if we go to war? Because if it's easy to sell, we're going to go to war. But don't worry, we're not going to. No one's going to die but because there's, yeah, there's going to be uh, yeah, there's going to be casualties all over the place because of you know them fighting. Inevitably, they're going to well, shoot. Don't you, don't you remember? I predicted like, my theory. My theory was that it's like you know, like a video game is the way we'll fight. Like you have a problem with another country, yeah. it'd almost be like you step into a video game and you play them like a video. Yeah, game. Yeah, but okay. So and, first, and the only thing that the only casualties are blown up drones. And things like this. Okay, so yes. So here's the question I have. You're, let's, we're going to war with another country. All right, let's all launch our our autonomous shit. You yeah. got your tanks. We got our tanks. We got our drones. All right, let's hit the button. Let's see who wins. Now we lose. They're like, okay, cool. We're gonna take over your country. You think we're gonna be like, yeah, yeah let's do no, that. That's not gonna happen. No, we're gonna be like, now nah, we'll go to phase two now. <laughs> yeah, we're now happen. let's let's put humans. No, on what's that. interesting because they've had a drone like you know in the air force, right? So they've had like they they have to suit up. They have to like treat it like they're actually you know in the cockpit of it in order to like make it seem still real. Because you could get, uh, I think they're worried about that like. I don't know if it's cognitive dissonance or whatever, where they're like disassociated with what's actually happening because they're they're far away from it, playing it like a video game. I I read an article about that, that these drone uh, pilots suffer from PTSD, right? Because they live in Arizona. They drive to the base. They plug in. They're bombing real people. Yeah, they're flying a drone and then they kill, you know, two terrorists and three bystanders. But, oh, they saw that there was a woman or a child there or whatever. And then they go home to to their wife. And they're, it's hard for them to switch gears like that, knowing yeah, you think? that they just bombed and killed someone. Right. You know, uh, this kind of shit is a is a general's dream, right? Because as a general, when you're ordering your soldiers to do something terrible, you don't want no questions. You don't want no hesitation. When it's a machine, uh, you know, go just kill everybody. They're just, okay, yes, sir. Bzz, everybody's dead. Yeah. It's going to be weird, dude. Well, yeah, again, this goes back to my original, like, I, I'm just worried about, like, who's thinking about morals anymore. Like, you know, with 
with uh, uh, what, what's happening with like these chimeras and like, uh, you know, like all this biological science and mm. stuff that people are just like, you know, if, because we can do it, we're doing it. Yeah. And, and the same thing now we're looking at war differently. It's like, oh, let's just let the machines do all our, our bidding. It's and like, be- what do you think is going to happen when it's just the machines doing all the shit? Then, yeah, then they take over. Come on, Can we man. see that in Terminator? Yeah. Hey, uh, what, uh, talking about morals of weirdness, uh, let's talk about the cock now. So, <laughs> so here, dude, great inserted dick joke. So, so you know, you guys know cockfighting, right? They have roosters. They fight each other. Oftentimes, they put extra blades on their. Yeah, on their, I had an uh, uncle that was yeah. a world champion. We brought this up. Oh before. my gosh! Yeah, right. you are so country, bro. As, as redneck as you can get, you over bro. Here, yeah. You had an uncle that was a cockfighter. Yeah, but, but in the wow. Philippines, though, it's like real. Like in the Philippines, it's like Super Bowl. Like I mean, you go to a stadium, they have a big screen TV. There's replay. Like it's, don't they put them on steroids wow. and shit? It's crazy. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, you. <laughs> that was, that's like, that's, you have you train <laughs> them. You train them, and you you feed them steroids during their training, and they have boxing gloves that you put them on. You so you spar them with boxing gloves. And you pump them full of steroids for months leading up to the fight, and then you put on the blades when it's time to fight. So a man was training his wow. rooster, put three inch blades on him, and the fucking rooster killed him. Oh, whoa. yeah, dude, he got killed by uh, his rooster. Which, by the way, that's standard. That's what it, that's the blades. They yeah. look like this. They're about this. They're about this long, and they 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 put three of them on their on their, each of their feet. So Jeez. so here's what happened. So during cockfighting training, the rooster stabbed the owner in the groin. And oh, then he, oh my god! And then he bled oh, to death. He this, bled this right. Story got even worse. Hey, hold on, hold on, dude. Oh man, <laughs> he, he went after the wrong cock. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah. Is, is that, that a guy? true story or is it just set up? No, for that? it was a true story. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Where was that at? Where was uh, it? this? I don't know. What was it, it here in the U.S. or I don't somewhere know. else? Where is it? Are, is this? Is it even legal? No, it's illegal here, but it's legal other places. Yeah. Well, I saw in Spain. I don't, this is probably 2016 though. Like one of the Indian. matadors uh, got gored to death, like in front of everybody on live TV. Oh, gosh, Which is man. insane. But it's like, that's the thing. Like, that can happen, and they know that can happen at some point. Like, the odds are going to be against you, and, and you know, you're fighting against a wild animal. Uh, see you later. Yeah, and roosters are aggressive, They're from what I've heard, right? Adam, you would know. You, you're oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. hell of aggressive. Oh, yeah, no, no, they're mean little suckers. Really? Yeah, yeah, they're real mean. Oh, man. Especially if you train them to be mean. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they're they trained to just do that. They get, they're get pinned up, and then when they're let out, it's to fight. And then they breed them too, right? Because yeah. you have a champion rooster. Right. And then that's what you can sell them for huge money. Wow. So if you have, just like anything else, if it's got a bloodline of like it's been a you know three generations of champions bred with another one that's had gladiator three, of chicken, yeah, then you can sell the you can sell the cock for you know ten fifteen grand, you know, <laughs> yeah, so, most expensive chicken you'll ever buy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do they have funny names and stuff? Because you know how they name uh, like yeah. like you know like racehorses uh, weird shit. No, my the annihilator. I don't. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to remember if my uncle had any names. Kentucky for Fried uh, Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I, you know what though? The, the trophies like real. It was like six foot trophy. It was massive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. a weird thing to be proud of though. I know. I mean? But yeah, in other countries it's a big deal though. Like over I mean here it's like that's weird and it's and it's, oh, it's super yeah, it's, frowned upon. Yeah, yeah, no, big time. But over over there, man, it's a big deal. Like, he's hilarious. like famous when he goes there. He gets pictures taken and people want him to sign in autographs wow. and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I know, isn't that, that funny? That's really weird. Oh, I got another article. That's pretty funny. Count Cluckula. So, <laughs> <laughs> you were thinking for a while. I was trying. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a little slow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is a this is a study that so Science Daily I've talked about this many times great place to find a bunch of studies and there's like endless studies if you're a total nerd you can go on here and just have a great time sometimes I'll spend hours on this but check this out right so they did a sewage study so they they went around different countries studied the sewage <laughs> to find which countries use the most drugs because you know some of it comes oh, out in your sweet. poop okay yeah. so the number one study the, the number one countries for for, for drugs one? hard drugs well for just drug especially for designer drugs okay was US of course, course. US was yeah, first place one. dude come on yeah. uh, the Netherlands Australia and New Zealand they're consuming the highest amounts of designer party drugs. Do you guys know what designer party drugs are, by the way? Well, yeah, what does that mean? Is that MDMA or uh... no? That's a that's not. A, it's, I know designer party drugs are drugs that were created to be gray market, right? They weren't explicitly illegal, uh, bec- but they are now. By the way, a lot of them are now. But they would create them to be exp- like gray market so that they could sell them. And the way they get away with it was they would sell them as research chemicals. So you'd buy them, and it would say something like "not for human consumption," you know, wink. 
or, or they'd sell it as bath salts. Remember the bath salt well, situation? Yeah, I remember oh, that. Man. Yes. So you go to these head shops. Turn people into zombies in Florida. I know. I heard yeah, about that, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> that so, was great. So, so the U.S., though, is first place in consuming. Uh, what are some examples of that? I don't know any other designer drug, party drugs. Well, where, where was I? Uh, Mephidrome was one of them. Uh, very, very similar in what effect. What is that? Uh, it, it was very similar in effect to Math, MDMA. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, so very similar in effect to MDMA. Um, I don't remember. There would, were this other be, ones. would this include like salvia and things like that? No, salvia is an herb. It's a plant. Like, yeah, designer drugs are literally created in a lab. Over the counter. What herb. about the fake the fake marijuana that was popular? That would be a designer. Okay. So yeah. That, what was that called? I don't even remember what it was. Spice or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. weird. Like, I, I don't get that. By the way, you're going to use a fake weed <laughs> that can kill that you. That has oh, side well, effects. Yeah, yeah but is that any, real weed? I mean, is it any more different than people that are doing all the fake steroid stuff? What do you mean? Oh, the designer stuff. Oh, yeah, SARMs and things like that. Like, SARMs is a dude. SARMs are. SARMs is even getting bigger now. Okay, can I tell it you hasn't, something? Hasn't slowed down. I at was all. doing so. I'm going to interview John Romano soon. And John Romano, for those who don't know, this guy's like the expert on all the weird stuff out He's there. He's like a walking almanac. Yeah, steroids, uh, growth hormones, all the designer stuff. He's worked with top athletes. He's been writing about this stuff for for years. So in preparation, I've been reading a lot about um, SARMs. So all I did was go on Google. And look up SARMs and read about. And there's, by the way, there's so many different SARMs that are out there now, right? And SARMs, for people who don't know, these are selective androgen receptor modulators. Essentially, they're they're drugs designed to activate the androgen receptor, just like testosterone would. But the goal is to have minimal side effects. So it gives you anabolic effects, minimal side effects. Uh, but you know, uh, we'll talk about the yeah, side effects later. To them. Yeah, right. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I've been doing research on that. I go on Facebook, and I'm getting hit with hella ads oh. for SARM on Facebook. Wow. These are supplement companies and they're selling them in like supplement bottles. Wow. I mean, it's blatant. It's wow. a matter of, it's a matter of time before they, they get cracked down on for sure. Oh yeah. Because it's getting crazy. I'm it literally, it's like be. buying supplements if you go online right now. Well, I mean, I, okay. So I, part of me gets it right. Cause we talked the other day about, you know, supplements as a, as a young teenage boy and like, I would try anything that was considered, you know, quote unquote legal. So I would be more likely to try something. A SARM than a steroid. Yeah, a SARM than a steroid, which is backwards thinking just because we have way more research on steroids than we have these made up chemicals. Testosterone itself is, especially for men, very non-toxic. We know what it does. We know what it doesn't do. SARMs. It's their research. They're not, they're not, they haven't, they're not even FDA approved yet. We don't know exactly what the long-term effects are, uh, you know, it's just so it's silly. It's easier to get. Yeah, because I can yeah. literally go on the internet. Well, it's right it's, not, it's not illegal, that's yeah. why. And yeah. that's why it's so popular, because you remember what it was like being a 17-year-old boy, and if someone sure. told you, you know, oh, I got to take this injectable steroid, or I can buy this pill over the counter. For sure, I would have done it. Yeah, me I too. Done it. Yeah, no, I, I would have fell for, for fell prey to it also. Yeah, so anyway, dude. And uh, by the way, um, I want a little, little shout-out to one of our sponsors, Paleo Valley. You ruined all beef jerky for me, completely. Yeah. Oh, I can't and eat. he had some that's like uh, super dry and like chewy. Like I had some over the weekend. We were doing a hike, and uh, uh, thankfully I found a couple. I stole some just so you guys know it was me <laughs> from from the back. <laughs> I figured, yeah, I, I stole like a whole bunch of them, but like I used them uh, for our hike. And it's dude, it's such a stark difference, and it's like it's it, it like holds the moisture in. It's just they're they're exactly. It's like you're eating grass fed meat. They're they're you know they're they're not dry as hell. Yeah. Um, well, have, that's comparing it to like regular. Or beef jerky too. If you if you find like other grass fed like organic oh, beef jerky, oh, bleh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. it's super dry. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's rough. Yeah, I mean, I think it's better than any of the any of the other beef jerky products that are out there. It's especially better than anything that is uh, like that. I mean, anything that is organic and grass fed, that is way yeah. way. Better. I oh, my kids love it. My oh, and yeah. I, my kids they are, love the spicy ones, the the jalapeno ones. That's your my, kids? Yeah, no, really? it's weird. Yeah, I'm I'm the summer sausage guy, but you know that yeah. was obvious. What, uh, what's your favorite flavor? Yeah, summer sausage. Oh, my bad. I thought you were talking about something else. Jalapeno. Your your mind is just... Wow, dude. (laughs) What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Anyway... uh, Have that effect. Yeah, one more thing about the training. I didn't forget to say this about, about the workouts. Dude, uh, and Doug and I were having this conversation. In fact, we may—I I think this would be a good 
single topic episode. By how strong up. I look. Yeah, just like, you know, Adam's looking really <laughs> Let's strong. Let's all talk about this. Yeah. Yeah. This is, <laughs> she just looks strong. Yeah. 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 I see how I, I, show, I, no go. I see how you, yeah, you and Doug look at my workouts. That's why I do half yeah. of my workout here and then the other half of you guys. You don't leave. want us to see your yeah, secrets? You just, yeah, you just try to copy all my you shit, steal dude. some of the silly moves oh, and then I'm like, oh, this isn't so silly. Hey. I like this. <laughs> yeah, you like those kit cars? Is that a Ferrari? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, wait. It sounds like a Honda. No, it's, uh, um, <laughs> It, it, we were talking about the value of following a pre-written program, even for guys like us, because of course I just, bro, it's so hard for me not to navigate to heavy lifting. It's yeah. so hard for me not to to just see what I can do well, with, I just, with low yeah, reps. I know. It's just like you get drawn back in and you just think that like, uh, like I should have done a lot of like prepping going back into heavy lifting and just boom, I'm right into it. Yeah. And then I feel pay the price. Well, much I can lift. It's the same way I feel about tracking food. Very similar. You know, it's the same same thing. Yeah. Can, can you intuitively lift? Can you intuitively eat? Yeah, absolutely can. And I think most of the time you should. I think that's a healthy way to kind of live. I think it's a healthy way to train too. I don't think you need to be following a, a program. I know that's kind of counter, but we sell programs. That's how we make this business work. But it's true. I think if you're at a certain level that it's healthy for you to break free and kind of do, and yeah. free flow every now and then. But there's tremendous value in revisiting that. So even if you are somebody who's really advanced, you know nutrition really well, you know programming mm -hmm. really well, even for someone like me, when I go back to tracking or go back to following a program, I always see great benefits. Yeah, from it. yeah. And I did use that new bar. What's that bar called? Is it a the safety? safety bar? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. 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 That is great. And then the curved one, is that a buffalo bar or a bison bar? I don't know. I always get confused between yeah, the no, two. Yeah, no, because, yeah, the bison bar. Or, yeah, I've, I've always been confused because there's one too that goes down. Yeah, you know, it's like this. Like, and yeah, this. I thought that's called an earthquake. Like, oh no, earthquake bar is the one. That no, that's the one. That's like the bamboo. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the one that flies. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Apparently, it's the one that's got the bamboo. <laughs> <on the> side. <laughs> No, it's it, it, the curved one that goes down, just comfortable on your back. But I feel then, like that's a bison bar. I think it is. But but the know, safety we'll get, we'll bar is yeah. like a front squat and a back squat combined. I love that one. Yeah, and I did both like crazy on Friday, and I'm just I love them. I absolutely love them. First question is from Lean Queen. Is the fat burning zone a real thing? Oh man, this thing's still around. Yeah, I Lean was Queen Vizine. as a trainer in in the in, in you know the late '90s, right when I first started. One of the first things that we were taught was that there was a a, a target heart rate zone, yeah. and the target heart rate zone you want to stay in so that you burn. God forbid you like move a little bit. Out. Yeah, you want to burn body fat. If you yeah. go under the target heart rate, you're not doing much. And if you go over it, you're burning muscle. Yeah, yeah. And so we would see, and it was really just a sales. I, yeah, I'm guilty of using yeah. that like crazy. Well, I didn't know though. I believed everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Me. I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't. Trainers that were adamant about yeah, this. Yeah, no, I totally. I, 100%. And body. so I remember one day I was like, you know, I was preaching this, and this is how I talk to people on cardio. This is literally, I'd approach people and be like, oh, hi, Mr. You know, are you in your target heart rate zone? What's that? Oh, it's the fat burning zone. You burn more fat. Fatty acids. Yeah. I felt, I felt, felt like Keep I was real this smart. Pace, you die. Yeah, and I'd sell, you know, whatever. Um, at, later on, I actually did some math. This was like maybe a few years later. And I said, hmm, if I train in my, because target heart rate is not super high intensity. It's not low intensity. It's, it's, it's also it's some moderate. It's kind of somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah. And what the, when you look at the studies, what they show is a greater percentage of calories come from fat in a particular zone. By the way, this is super general because it's very different from person to person. But within a certain zone, you burn more a greater percentage of calories from fat. Now, the percentage difference isn't that big. It's like five more percent, right? But we sold it anyway. But then I went and I did the math and I said, if I train at moderate intensity and I burn 300 calories and 50%, I'm making up a number, but let's say 50% came from fat, that's 150 calories from fat. Right. If I train at a higher intensity and I train at, and I burn, let's say, 450 calories, but only 49% or 48% of my calories come from fat, I'm still burning more fat. Right. And then, of course, when you really learn about calories in versus calories out, it doesn't matter. In fact, mm -hmm. if you fast and do cardio, a greater percentage of your calories will come from fat, from stored fat. But then if you eat later, it doesn't matter. It all balances out. So really, at the end of the day... <laughs> Doesn't make a big difference. Now, what is your theory on somebody? Let's say, let's take like a competitor, for example, who is you know hovering and they're coming in their their final three or four weeks, they are sitting around four or five percent body fat, extremely lean, and they have been low calorie for the last three four weeks. So they've been in a debt. They're constantly in a deficit right now because they're leaning out for a show. 
is it more advantageous for this person to do high intensity cardio for 30 minutes to an hour versus like walking for 30 minutes to an hour? I think, and I would love to hear your opinion, Adam, because you're obviously you competed. Uh, but the, but you know, instinctually, what what I would say is it depends on how depleted and how stressed the person is. If they're going into competition, they're probably super dieted. They've been dieted for a while. They're four percent, five percent body fat. Yeah. A lot of high intensity cardio probably would overwhelm their system and wouldn't make them look or feel good. And here's the thing with 4% body fat, a couple pounds of water looks like you gain 3% body fat. It's right. such a big difference. So, I mean, what, what's your opinion? So, on that's that? my th my theory. That I would walk, right? So, I was. You would I would, go low. Yeah, because I'm already. It's the only time that you would catch me doing uh, any sort of intense cardio is if I was coming from a very fed state, if I was high calorie. And I was still trying to burn off a lot of calories, so I didn't put on a bunch of extra body fat or any have additional calories. I'm trying to burn additional calories. Mm -hmm. But when I am in that much of a deficit and I've been that low and I know that I'm that high of stress, me, my theory is that, okay, if the body's got so low of body fat percentage as it is and I'm trying to shave the last bit of it, I have no I have no stored energy because I've been depleted for the mm -hmm. last three or four days in a row. If I go out and do something extremely intense, this is where my body would probably tap into and utilize muscle because it doesn't have a lot of resources and I'm stressing the fuck out of it. So mm -hmm. my thought process is, okay, in that state, it makes sense for somebody to use like low intensity or target heart rate type of training and only in that. Anybody else, you got a client who's 20 pounds overweight or above, which is most people that's mm -hmm. trying to lose weight. It's a calorie game yeah. where we, we want to get as low, get as burn as many calories as we possibly can during this period I of time. I just look at it as another one of those gimmick things that they're going to hold on to, just like we mentioned earlier about Epoch. Uh, I've actually seen a lot of circuit training type of uh, franchises like back in the day trying to organize their entire uh, workouts and everything around this fat burning zone and uh, really trying to, to make sure everybody kept you know their heart rate down. They like, didn't want to go too rigorous. They wanted to kind of pull people back up and and just maintain this but um yeah it for for the most part it was like it, you, you know at the end of the day like like you'd said it's a wash like whatever you know your calorie intake is and then your calorie burn at the end of the day is it is for be. everybody else it is for most people for the average person right like everybody like you're talking about the one percent yeah when you is, get down to four percent body fat yeah. like every little thing can make you look different this is the, the big difference is how is it going to make you look and feel on stage. And again, if you're 4% body fat, I've gotten down as low as five. And I know that I could look like I gained 3% body fat just because my body was holding water. Right. That doesn't happen at 12% body fat. You, right. you can't tell it. And, and my theory is this, is that you, you, the body always wants to utilize you know, sugar first as fuel, right? It wants to use that first as the primary source. But if you've been running low and you don't have any of that as a source, the next primary source is fat. Mm -hmm. If you don't have very much of that, and then in addition to that, you push the body really hard. My thought is the body will adapt and pare down muscle That's in that situation. Right. So in that situation, you are stressing the body. You don't have very much. You have no stored energy and fuel. You've got very little fat as fuel in there. You're already in this thin line. And then you're pushing the body in addition. It's going to pare down yeah. muscle. Yeah, well, I know a lot of people that think that you get all depleted or they'll do fasted cardio and then like they'll eat a lot later. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a wash. No, here, here's the way you should view cardio. Um, view cardio two different ways. One, for health. So okay, I'm going to do this for health, in which case do the form of cardio that you enjoy the most because you're the most likely to stay consistent doing the one you enjoy the most. Don't worry about all these nuances and splitting hairs. If you're doing cardio for health, which is a great reason to do it, just do what you enjoy. So if you like hiking, there's your cardio. You like swimming, there you go. You like to row, there's your cardio. You like to do you know salsa dancing, there's your cardio. If you're, Here's the other way to look at it. It's for athletic uh, performance. If cardio is for athletic performance, if you're an athlete and you're doing it to improve your VO2 max or your performance, then you can start to really program it, right? If I want to maximize my VO2 max, then it's much, I got to be much more specific with the kind of training that I do. Other than that, that's it. That's pretty much it. For 99.9% .9 of people listening, Everything else, don't worry about. If it's for health, just do your favorite type, and you'll be totally fine. Well, this is if a, it's for performance, get specific. This is another reason why I'm like a fan of like you know you know a slow jog or a walk for your source of kind of cardiovascular training is because that it's more sustainable. Yeah. If you are somebody who gets into the like, I'm going to go hit the stairmaster mm. for an hour and just be drenched in sweat and kill yourself. Yeah, you might have some motivation for a few months leading up to Vegas or that wedding or whatever like that. But the likelihood that you're going to maintain this stairmaster for an hour 
really intense mm -hmm. every single day for the rest of your life is very low. But you know what? I can most certainly discipline myself to walk for an hour. Yeah. Like that's or not do hard. Some, whatever you enjoy. Right. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Next question is from Nicholas Costa, thirty-five seventeen. How should one train and glow grow the gluteus medius? Okay, so love me some side butt. That's what I was gonna say. So the gluteus medius is the side butt, and from an aesthetic uh, standpoint, right? From aesthetics meaning just how good your butt looks. The side butt really is important. It gives you that round, that bubble butt, rotund looking butt, and you can definitely develop your glutes and neglect. The side butt, and then you end up with kind of a, a long butt. It doesn't get. It doesn't, you don't have that nice roundness to your butt. Which, by the way, is is mostly genetic, right? So the origin and insertion really dictates what someone's butt. That's why some people have this like great little bubble butt. They didn't do anything for it. It was natural. But that doesn't mean Justin that if you have a long yeah, origin insertion that you can't create the illusion that you have a bubble butt by training it and doing things like we're talking about right now. I have personally found so there's lots of exercises like the good girl bad girl machines or doing like slight side planks or you know walking side lunges or whatever. There's lots of e exercises that target that muscle specifically i have had the most success teaching sumo deadlifts and having this. people push the legs out. yes right? sumo deadlifts when you have to open up your stance and you externally rotate your feet it turns that that muscle on and then you're loading the bar and you're lifting heavy weight mm -hmm. nothing i have seen have, has grown butts more more side butt than that exercise particularly which i think it's funny because right now there's a thing going around Instagram right now of like anybody who says uh, sumo deadlifts for the butt is a good exercise is ridiculous. It's oh, not. Gosh. I think that's ridiculous. I think it's not. I, in my experience of training hundreds of different people on this exercise for mm -hmm. this purpose, I have felt that's been one of the best games. I changers. like it. Frog pumpers are good too. It's like a hip thrust, but where your knees are open and you're pushing with yeah, the Yeah, but the problem with those, it's you, body weight. And you can't load them. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You, yeah, and it, you, what's going to build a lot of muscle? Cause, and I feel like a lot of women do stuff like that already. So that's why like the sumo deadlift was so, I had so much success with it. So I understand that too, right? So if someone's never done a frog pump before, you've never done like tube walking. Lateral tube walking. Yeah, lateral tube walking. Those are all great exercises that target that muscle specifically, yeah. but you're not loading it. Yeah. If you want to grow that muscle, you want to load that muscle. And point. one of the Agreed. best ways to do that is sumo deadlifts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah everything else is complimentary. Yeah, here's another one that I like. And Justin actually does these uh, quite often. So I know we tease him about his butt. It's maybe why. Um, <laughs> side walking but dragging a sled. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there, now, there's another great one. Now you're going laterally, but you're loading it, yeah. right? And it's this is such a great exercise because here's so the sled is so underrated yep. uh, as a tool for building muscle. One of the things I love about the sled is you could load the shit out of it, and you're mainly focusing on the positive portion of the rep. There is no negative, right? Now, why is this a good thing? I thought the negative built muscle. Here's why. Because you're not doing the negative, you could do a lot more volume mm -hmm. with minimal damage. So you could do your normal leg workout, throw a bunch of sled drives on there, and not hammer your body like you did uh, other exercises, but you're still yeah. loading I'm the hell out I'm not counting the amount of, of steps I'm taking. Yes. I'm just trying to get to a place, and, and, and inevitably I'm doing more reps than I would have, say I had to come back you know, into my, my, my state where I'm like doing a side lunge and like propping myself back. Like I'm just grinding my way through. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a great exercise. Yeah, that's, that's another great exercise. It's great, and, it's just, and you're, you're crossover stepping, right? You're yeah. crossover stepping sideways with a loaded sled, and get strong at it like get really strong see how much you could pull for for you know for 10 feet or 15 feet and you will build uh, the side body. I also find a lot of single leg stuff is great for this oh, yeah. because that muscle is also responsible for having stabilized the hip yeah. so if you're doing a lot of single leg exercises single leg deadlift lunges uh, Bulgarian split squats like if you do a lot of single leg work the glute med gets worked a lot too because it's helped stabilizing the hip in that position next question is from Heather Kovacs what supplements are worth spending big money on, and which ones can I save on? Okay, so uh, I did. I went full circle with this as uh, a supplement uh, fanatic as a kid. I, you know, taking supplements for a long time. Um, at some point, I started to just look at the ingredient and then the lowest price, and I'm like, it's the same. This one's whey. That one says whey. This one says creatine. This one says whatever. That one says so. I'm just going to go with the cheapest price. Here's the deal with the supplement market. It is largely market regulated. Okay, so there's there's very few regulations in the supplement market for standards. I'm not complaining, by the way. I love this. I love market regulations. We we get to pick what we want to buy and what we like. It also it, it really helps with innovation in supplements. So my supplement market is constantly changing uh, and, and evolving. 
Um, that being said, if your number one priority with supplements is the cheapest price, you're going to end up with shitty products. For sure. And consider this. Here's what you should spend the, the money on or worth spend money on. Supplements you take daily. If you take it daily, then go for quality. And here's why. Mm -hmm. This happened recently by us. It was like a couple years ago. There was this huge consumer report that came out where they actually took a bunch of protein powders. And they found a bunch of them were like exceptionally high in, in heavy metals. Yeah. Heavy metals build up in your system. Or way low on the protein that it said it had. In it. A lot then that, and that happened. Yeah, protein spiking was a big thing. They for did. Where they actually, companies were putting, let's say, it's 25 grams of protein per serving. But in reality, it's like 10 grams of protein. But then they add the amino acids that get tested later to show that it has more. So you think you're taking 30 grams of protein. You're only taking 10 or 15. Uh, but, oh, but I spent, you know, uh, you know, say $5 on this bucket of, of protein. Right. Quality is super important. Uh, number one, you want to make sure that it has what it says it has. Good companies will have third-party testing. Um, number two, you definitely don't want to be taking something you don't know because like the heavy metals, uh, you know, problem, that can become neurotoxic. So here you are, you're healthy, you're fit, you're taking your supplements, you think you're doing everything, and then you start getting weird symptoms. You can't figure out what's going on. Why do I feel like shit? I work out. Yeah. I eat right. Why am I getting tingling in my fingers? Or why am I why am I anxious all of a sudden? You have no idea that your your health supplement weren't they finding is poisoning a you. lot of that uh with fillings from like the dentist, like the using like specific types of metals. Like, oh mercury. Mercury, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the, yeah the protein powder one was a big one. And guess what? The ones that were the worst were the vegan organic ones that they, they found a lot of them in. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because of the, the pesticides they use were, were the other thing you could save money on, I think that's I the thing that's been blown out of uh, proportion right now is the uh, creatines. The creatine market, because so much research has come around that, and we all agree that it's the best, it's, if not they've created all these different versions. Exactly. Yes. Now everybody's adding all because it, it drove the price down, which is great, right? So it's made basic old plain creatine pretty cheap to get a hold of. But because of that, there's terrible margins in it. So supplement companies are, oh, okay, let's add this now to say it's better, it's faster absorbing, or let's yeah. add this. Yeah. So this creatine fizzes when you put yeah. it in your water. Yeah, do this one so you get recovery added with it. And so they start adding all these other things and then selling the added benefits or why their creatine is better. So one of the ways you can save a ton of money is don't go buy, don't buy into all the hype around other types of creatine. Get plain ass creatine, creatine. monohydrate. Yes, that's the one that has all the studies. It's the one that shows that it works the best. Um, it's the one in comparison with others it has the greatest absorption. All the other creatine versions are a waste of extra money. Some of them are fine, and it's really and it's hard to pixie dust, right? So there's a lot of like pixie dusting in the supplement industry yeah. where you add because you have so much stuff. And you don't realize how much of the stuff that you want in that supplement isn't really in there when it's just purely creatine monohydrate. That's yep. all there is. Yeah. That's what's in there. So yeah. what you get, what you read on it, is what you get. Yeah, there was a supplement back in the day. I'm going to talk to all the all the older lifters listening right now. There was a supplement called Hot Stuff back in the day. Do you guys remember Hot Stuff? You remember that bottle? I vaguely remember. Okay, so it was called Hot Stuff, and the reason why it was popular, it, apparently they changed the formula. Apparently the original one was uh, people loved it, but anyway, Hot Stuff was popular because in the ingredients it had every single new and cool supplement in the bottle. <laughs> I just threw it all in. <laughs> Everything. So you op you buy it and you'd be like, oh my God, this has, uh, it's got, you know, Smilax. It's got Yohimbi. It's got Sal Palmetto. It's got, you know, it's got Ectisterone. It's got, and literally it would be this ingredient list that was like a hundred things long. But what you don't realize is it's, they put like, you know, it's like, you know, two like particles a, of a it. Sprinkle. Yeah, yeah. In there. And then yeah. they can say that they have it in there right. if they actually did. Really it was just an expensive uh, protein powder. Yeah, spend money on quality food. Next question is from JJ4Red. How do you stay motivated when you have reached most of your natural potential? Okay, so here's the problem, is that you are attaching what drives you to work out to the progress and results you get in the gym. Now, there's nothing wrong with valuing progress and results and measuring them because it's a great way to know whether or not what you're doing is, is good or not, but it's obviously a failing long-term solution because- you know, uh, let's say strength is something that I'm always after. I'm not going to keep getting stronger. If that were the case, I've been working out since I was 14. I should be able to deadlift, you know, 10,000 pounds by now. Uh, but that's not the case, right? At some point, you're going to hit certain limits and your body's not going to continue to progress. And if that's all I cared about, I would mm -hmm. stop working out. I wouldn't want to work out anymore. Well, this, is, this person has to work on their, their body image issue. It's no different than the person who is really obese that's chasing being happy through losing weight. Mm -hmm. 
and then they get there and they lose weight and they're still not happy with themselves. You're chasing these, you've reached your potential of maybe building muscle or looking a certain way, and yet you still feel unsatisfied. And you're in the same rat race as that person who's obese that's trying to yeah, lose weight yeah. to be happy is you got to be happy with who you are and what you look like now. That's a body image issue. Yeah, yeah. I would say you're working out, value it for all the other things, mm -hmm. the things that will always uh, you know, pay you dividends, right? So what's always going to pay you dividends with your workouts? Uh, I'm taking care of myself. You're always taking care of yourself if you work out properly. It's time to myself. I'm present. Uh, I enjoy the challenge. Can you challenge yourself with your workouts to the to the day you die? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it keeps me mobile. It, it it prevents me from major illness. Or if I do get ill, it makes me more resilient. Is that always going to be true? Yes. If you focus on those things. Then you, but if it's always about results, yeah, at some point you're screwed. Well, you yeah. can also switch directions too. Like if it's, you know, if you're, if he's referring or she, I don't know if it's he or she, if they're referring to like their aesthetic potential or their strength potential, well then switch to mobility. Yeah. There's or, a lot of other pursuits out there yeah, or, waiting for you. Yeah. Or train, train something that you never lived. Yeah. When's the last time you got really good at Turkish get ups, mm -hmm. you know, or when, when was the last time you've done an exercise you've never done before and got really good at it? When's the last time you decided, Hey, I'm going to get really good at pull-ups. Like, I think the way we've stayed motivated for all these years is at, cons, I'm constantly changing my goal. It yeah. cannot be always about aesthetics. It cannot always be about strength. It cannot always be about mobility. It's it's important to move in and out of all those things. Something like this, it, to me, it just just speaks that they're comfortable. They're, they're comfortable right now. They're whatever they've done, they've been doing it, you know, and, and they're glad to see uh, progress where they've made it. But now it's like they're comfortable. What do I do now? Like I've I've hit what I wanted to do, but you know, you got to keep challenging yourself. You got to keep moving in different directions. There's so many different different ways right. the body could benefit from you training it, uh, learn a new skill, you know, right. go, go in a completely different direction. That's just hard. Right. And so you're looking for like some advice to, you know, form back into your original goal, but you got to go away from your goal. Yeah, and also be fair with your comparisons, right? You know, compare yourself to yourself. And then if you want to compare yourself to others, at least be fair and compare yourself to people in your age group, for example, like if I'm 60 and I'm working out and I'm constantly comparing myself to fit 30 year olds, it's not very fair. But if I look at other 60 year olds, I mean, I, I trained a lot of people in advanced age and it was remarkable to me. And of course it's easier to observe people, uh, other people than it is yourself. When you're doing it yourself, your ego gets in the way and you can be a little bit skewed. But as a trainer, it's one of the things I love about training people is that it allowed me to be objective by looking at other people and then I'd reflect it back on myself. So I'd have these clients that were in their 70s who were consistent with their workouts. I had one guy that I trained that had been working out since he was 30 consistently, always. By the time I was training, he was in his late 60s and then early 70s. He was very fit. But man, when you compared him to the average 70-year-old, he was on another planet. I mean, the average seven-year-old would have trouble walking up a you know a thirty-foot hill or whatever. That guy could run up that hill. He could do all kinds. He's super mobile. He's going to be mobile and independent till the day he dies. So it, that's a little bit more fair. But looking at you, you're, you know, oh, uh, oh man, you know, I can only bench press you know two hundred pounds, and that thirty-year-old over there is bench pressing two hundred and fifty pounds. Like, well, you know, you're fifty-five. I mean, why don't you look at other fifty-five-year-olds right. and see what that looks like? We'll make it a little bit more fair. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so you can come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. Instagram is our favorite place to go. You can look for Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can look for me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam. The better you get at cardio, the less calories you burn while you do it. Your body gets really good at it. Now, the reason why this is different with resistance training is because the thing that your body's trying to get good at is strength. The side effect of that is the faster metabolism. Through the process of getting stronger, you have the side effect of burning more calories. Now, with cardiovascular activity, you're asking yourself